hello, we are the SYP and thank you very much for inviting us to have a chat with you today for the Portico uh, Digital Festival. So we're very excited to join you. Um, I am Elizabeth. I am the co-chair and treasurer slash anything else you'd fancy for the North Committee of the Society of Young Publishers. Uh, I'm based in Manchester and I've been in the trade for a few years now. Um, but yeah, so I'm joined with my lovely colleagues and fellow committee members. Um, so yeah, I'll just pass you around for a quick introduction and then we'll um, get on with the chat. So I think we'll go to Kate, if that's okay. Yeah, um, so I'm Kate and I am one of the digital and communications officers for the Society of Young Publishers North. I'm based in Liverpool and um, I've been working in publishing officially since January this year. Um, <laughs> Kate, other Kate, do you want to go? Yeah, I'll go. Um, I'm the other Kate. I am an events officer for SYP North. I am based near Blackpool um, and I am a publishing and marketing assistant for Dark Skies Publishing and I started that two months ago um, and I was an intern for six months before that. Who would like to Jess? <laughs> Hi, I'm Jess. Um, I'm based in Manchester and I'm currently an assistant editor for CPP, which is part of the University of Manchester and is an educational publisher. Um, I've had a few roles in publishing before this, but I've been in this role for six months. Hey, and it's only me left. So I'm Mandy. I was based in Manchester, but I recently packed up and moved down south to London. Um, I'm a digital and communications officer and I also work as an editorial intern at Sage Publishing. Thank you very much. Um, please forgive us for this. This is our first uh, recorded conversation for the SYP. So, um, so yeah, bear with us, we'll get there. Um, but yeah, so thank you very much for that. And I think we're just going to say a bit about the SYP generally. Uh, so we are a um, voluntary committee uh, we are the north branch uh, there are a few other members but um just us today um we've got a branch in london oxford southwest ireland and i've probably forgotten some scotland um i think that's everyone uh, we offer a basically an open oh. i said scotland oh ireland anyway we've got lots and um yeah, so we basically offer a open door to publishing industry to try and break down the barriers of publishing, whether that is salary, uh, job availability, networks, things like that. Uh, we, as a North committee, are um, recently we have just started our mentorship scheme. Um, we are due to, we are finishing that at the moment, and our new one will be opening um, at the back end of this year. And we offer a mentorship and a mentee uh, for about six to nine months and they are a connection to the trade and um, we do have uh, one or two in this conversation here who are actually on the current mentorship uh, before they were committee members and um, so that's good um, the SYP also offers a imprint magazine which is up-to-date information about the trade uh, guest speakers um, general like book club recommendations and things like that um, we also have, oh, we have lots of events. And that's the main thing. Um, at the minute, obviously, they are all virtual, um, but we do some, we do usually do in-person events, but I will take that to the events team in a minute for um, a quick chat about what we've done. Um, but yeah, so we do quite a lot. There's probably loads I've missed for the SYP, but please do go on the website and have a look. Uh, memberships are digital. Memberships are £18, and that gives you access to the website. Uh, online events and the digital copy of imprint and uh, a full membership for a student is 24 pound uh, and that is like in-person events book clubs and things like that uh, one benefit we do have of the covid pandemic is that everything is online so you can visit any branch you want and uh, for any event so i think there's usually about three to four events a month uh, and we kind of cross between different branches so that's just the housekeeping of SYP. Um, and yeah, I'll just pass, I'll, I'll just have a quick chat about what we've done so far for events. If someone wants to just say a bit more about that. Are you gonna go? Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, we've we've had an exciting year of events. Um, so both me and Kate are um, events officers and we have done 
two events so far, um, one which was behind the scenes of indie publishing and one more recently, which was about accessibility and different pathways into publishing, uh, focusing on apprenticeships. And both of them were really exciting and had a good turnout and we're hoping to carry on that. So this month we've got a book club coming up later this week, um, which is with SYP Oxford. And we also have another event later this month with the All Together Network, um, which we're very excited about as well. Uh, we're hoping to get some face-to-face -face events, maybe towards late summer with a big festival. We have quite big plans for that um, and hopefully continue our online presence as well so that we have that accessibility as well. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> if, um, but yeah, no, if you follow us on newsletters and social media and things like that, you will see our events. Um, and we tend to update on Twitter as well quite often. So if you are interested in events, then do feel free to get in touch with us. Um, and I think uh, Mandy and I have actually been um, in touch with some of the universities. Um, I don't know if you want to say a bit more about what we've done recently, Mandy, if that's yeah. OK, um, so we do have uh, good relationships with universities and we have good outreach. So, for example, one event that we did a couple of weeks ago that I was also a panelist on was called the uh, Women in Media. So that was University of Manchester students, which is also my alumni, um, arranging for speakers to talk about their pathways into media and the arts. And this range from publishing, which is what I spoke about, uh, to other things like sports. And that was done with Hodder Gibson. And we also have good ties with uh, local universities and their MA courses. And we do this through anything from, you know, hiring guest speakers to um, mentors for publishing hopefuls for our um, mentoring scheme, which is an opportunity to receive, receive personalized structured uh, career guidance from an industry, industry professional and just sort of help these publishing hopefuls get their foot into the door. Yeah, it's really good. And I think we um, definitely are increasing it this year as well with our university mm. outreach. And I think it's really good. Um, and we're also now contacting six forms and local um, high schools. Um, so if you are watching this and you are interested in, well, getting us to come and speak or just having a conversation with us, then feel free to uh, get in touch with us. Um, and yeah, I think I briefly said earlier about our social media, um, but I think we all know about the website and things like that. But um yeah, we've got a newsletter. I think Kate, you've been working. Have you been working on the newsletter? I think. <laughs> yeah, we've been, yeah, I've been working on the newsletter. Um, the newsletter's great because it's like got loads of resources. So if you want to get into publishing, like, and obviously it tells you about our events and um, like jobs um, and different northern publishers, and we always have a book of the month as well. So, yeah. Yep, that's very true. It's good. It tends to come out at the start of the month. So if you do want to sign up, that is, um, we have all of our information there. But I think as SYP generally, um, that's the main uh, the main bit done. So I might just pass around to the team, and just um, let you hear about their pathway into publishing and a bit of background and how they managed, how they, did they like it? Are they in? Um, how did they get in and things like that? So um, given you've moved all the way to London, Mandy, let's, uh, let's start with you. <laughs> Um, yeah, so my pathway into publishing was quite um, random and quite rogue, considering I didn't do an English literature degree, which is sort of what people stereotypically think that someone working in the trade should have. Um, I did a degree in German and East Asian studies. Um, so publishing wasn't, you know, sort of the most advertised career uh, for this um, degree. However, um, I got into Sage Publishing through a BAME internship. Um, so they were hiring for four people of color to sort of diversify the industry, which is quite, you know, it's dominated by um, sort of um, like middle-class um, English literature graduates. So they wanted to diversify a bit more. Um, so I utilized my degree in a way to say, well, look, because this is academic publishing, I studied this for my undergraduate degree. I studied a um, double honours, and then I also studied abroad in Germany. And um, I think I would be a great addition to the team because I'm really into academics. And, you know, it was no problem. In my company, not many people did do English literature. So that was really refreshing to see. And um, my application was also quite strange, as in I did a video CV 
very legally blonde Elwood style although there was no bikini it was very extra and over the top and uh, they they seemed to really like that so um yeah that was sort of my way into publishing which is I understand very rogue and not the norm but it goes to show that it can be done yeah and I think that's important as well I think that is one other thing that the SYP really do try and push is you don't have to be coming from the traditional um Mm. English literature background um I mean you say you speak German I think you're a gymnast so very impressive things um do you think it's important as well to just let those who are interested in joining the trade that sometimes being having different skills that might not be the obvious choice for um publishing do you think it's really important I think it is important to just push them and just show that you've got other things Um, oh yeah exactly I think with a lot of people trying to get into publishing there's a lot of people who come in with a book blog or a book Instagram which is great but for people who don't have that so I didn't have that but I used my other experiences to sort of push my application so I said listen I was a three-time national champion gymnast I can work hard and juggle tasks I speak three languages so you know I can bring some intelligence into the company and for people who don't have an English literature literature degree or have traditional backgrounds to get them into publishing I do think it's worth having a look into the trade because for example before I came to Sage Publishing I didn't even know open access publishing was a thing and now that I've learned more about open access publishing it's 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 great it's just helping public education become more accessible for everyone and that's a career route I wouldn't have known if I hadn't applied. No and I think that's the thing isn't it I think sometimes um, when you think of publishing from the outside Mm. you just see the books on the shelf that you just pick up in the local supermarket or the local bookshop but actually there's so much more with um, Mm -hmm. different trades and things like that Um, so obviously you're at Sage so it was the internship the one that you were after like did you go for that internship because it was Sage and it was a bit different open access things like that Um, is that what drew you to Um, So when I saw the listing for the internship, um, publishing was one of those industries, like I said, it wasn't advertised for my course. And then also because I didn't come from the traditional background, I thought, well, there's no point in applying um, because I'm not going to get in anyway. But then when I saw this internship, I thought, well, what is there to lose? And then since joining the internship, I um, I, I really, really enjoy academic publishing. It's, it's, It's so underrepresented in the publishing industry because people just think the glitz and glamour of trade publishing or fiction or romance novels but um, for me I prefer academic just because I feel like I'm genuinely helping students and you know scholars and researchers. Yeah no I think it's really important I mean my background also is in academic as well so Mm. uh, we can touch on that later but um, so what's a typical day in your life as in your role just for those that don't know anything really about publishing or um, mm-hmm. internship just very brief but <laughs> yeah so mine's very specific to academic publishing so this probably isn't representative of trade um, but what I do is I support commissioning editors for um, a variation of lists so our lists include business and management psychology international relations and politics research methods and I basically read over manuscripts make sure that they're all neat and concise and that the online resources for our textbooks also make sense and have enough exercises for students to do. And again, just help um, commissioning editors chase after authors or if authors have queries saying, um, how, how many books did I sell this year? I would then feedback mm-hmm. as well. And also a lot of course research. It's very varied though, isn't it? For, it really um, is, yeah. It's really interesting. Um, but yeah, as, as you can probably guess, we could probably talk all day about everyone uh, in the trade, but I will, uh, I'm aware we've got short on time, so I will pass to Kate, if that's okay. Which go, Kate? Oh, go with Kate Walton, I think, if that's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um, so I work, um, two publishers actually, I work part-time for Blue Coat Press um, and we publish photography books and then part-time for Rethink Press, who are, they publish like self-help books and um, business books. And um, I I was kind of, um, I did English literature at uni, so mm-hmm. difficult. Um, but I didn't know I wanted to go into publishing until I finished uni, so I didn't really get involved in like things I maybe should have. And then like when I finished uni, I just got like an admin job in the NHS. And then, like, I was like, okay, I don't want to do this. I want to work in publishing. So I just, like, wrote out to all local publishers in Liverpool. And um, this was, like, during the 
start of the pandemic. So I was really lucky because I got like a remote one day a week um, bit of work experience. And I did that like a few months while I was doing the admin job. Um, and admin, like even though it might not seem relevant, like a lot of publishers that I've like, had interviews with have really liked that. Um, so yeah, then they took me on part time um, eventually after I'd done work experience for a few months for them. Um, so that's kind of how I got into it. So it's definitely not um, the generic route. So I feel like I got quite lucky in a way, but I think that it is all about like making contacts and definitely like getting any kind of experience is definitely important. Um, yeah, and then I think I got the other one because of the admin experience that I had and um, obviously the publishing experience. That I yeah. Had. So what, obviously you're working across two different presses, um, but like what's your typical like day? What do you do if you're in your like kind of like in a week, things like that? Just... Yeah, um, so they're both really different roles. Like one of them is pretty much all admin stuff and it's like the, the Rethink Press one, um, I'm quite new to it, but I'm just doing like bibliographic data. Um, that's all that is. And then the other one is like, completely different I do I do a little bit of everything I do a bit of marketing a bit of social media a bit of publicity I've done a bit of editing and now I'm getting like given my own book to like oversee completely wow. um, because it is like an independent publisher it's a really small team so you do just dip in a bit and um my boss is so lovely and he really wants to like train me up so he's like here you go here's your own project like you take control of this yeah. um so yeah really yeah I think that's really good and I think the Northern Fiction Alliance are um, speaking for the Portico as well so you'll probably hear more about them um, but I think that is one benefit isn't it of an independent press is that you do get such a variety of jobs and they have the time to um, pass you around and uh, see different uh, different angles of it which is really really good um, yeah. but yeah and I think we can all say here like you know we love the independents and we do support them it's a huge thing in the north as well uh, we have really strong independent um presses um but yeah I mean you've got a bit of everything there haven't you Kate I mean operations yeah. the bibliographic it really, like shows you which parts you enjoy as well like yeah. the parts you maybe want to do a bit more of as well mm. good very interesting <laughs> um and Jess you've obviously I think you said you're a uh, assist, uh, editor assistant editor one of the two um go on I'll let you go <laughs> Yeah, um, so I'm an assistant editor at the moment, um, which I've been for the last six months. So obviously a lot of my um, job is editing, but I do some marketing as well. That's kind of a joint role um, at the minute, which is really fun and exciting. But yeah, do you want to know how I got there or? Um, anything you'd like, yeah. how you got there, <laughs> um, what you do, what you do as your day, what you do in your day, anything, just a bit of information really, just to show them what, what other options there are in uh, Yeah, in I had a few um, different jobs. So I've worked in admin and then marketing and communications for a small independent poetry press in Sheffield, um, which I absolutely loved. Um, but when I moved out of Sheffield, I went into editing for news and did that for a year and then six months ago went into editing for educational and um, kind of academic publishing as well. So we do um, research papers as well as learning materials for um, pharmaceutical professionals. So it's very different to what I'm used to, but it's been um, a real eye opener for me to see that I really enjoy that sort of focus on language and editing and making things really clear and accessible. And I feel like that's sort of where I've gone now, more from a marketing background yeah. into editorial. So um, it's been a really interesting six months. Um, I also used to work as a bookseller um, when I lived in Sheffield, which was amazing and really opened my eyes to how much um, the publishing industry relies on bookshops. And oh, a hundred percent. I think that is another thing, isn't it? Like bookshops and booksellers get such a huge insight into the publishing industry. Um, that yeah. If you can get, a, you know, a Saturday job where you work there, generally, if you want to get into the trade, it's really good knowledge to have. Yeah, it really opened my eyes to especially how trade publishing works, how they get the books there, how much they rely on big bookshops like Waterstones and Blackwells to have the right um, 
stands and displays for the book so yeah it was I've had quite a variety of jobs but um they've all been really interesting and all sort of contributed to how I feel about the industry now so good yeah. very interesting lots of many like lots of different part, departments you've kind of gone through and different trades yeah um, <laughs> <quite around>. <laughs> um, but okay what about you what are you up to so I work for a self-published author who basically runs her own um, very successful publishing imprint. Um, so she like publishes all of her own books through the imprint and also kind of sponsors um, the publication of other books. So like anthologies and things. Um, I've got one here to show off. So she's <laughs> called um, LJ Ross and she's a crime and thriller writer. Um, and I actually, it's really interesting working for um, her company because it's not kind of um, a traditional publishing house where you'd have like an office and there's, you know, loads of people working there. There's such a small team and everybody's freelance. So there's no office. Everybody works from home um, even before COVID. Um, but my route into that was um, a bit like Kate, I did a BA in English literature from Newcastle University and I knew that I wanted to go into publishing um, but was kind of really struggling to land work experience. I couldn't afford to go to London under any circumstances um, and trying to find work experience in the north was like few and far between so I ended up doing some work experience um, like an internship in a marketing company um, which I would definitely suggest people to do if you can think of anything that's adjacent like um, journalism, marketing, PR, anything that involves kind of writing or project managing, admin, um, anything like that can really, really help. So I um, did some work in marketing. I also volunteered at some book festivals like Durham Book Festival. I did some work there. Um, and that's always really good. It shows that you're passionate about the industry, the same as if you're a bookseller or something. Um, and then I graduated and ended up working in a supermarket because of COVID and there's no jobs. Um, and I ended up tweeting about that and it kind of got a lot of um, attention on Twitter. And my now boss uh, ended up seeing it and offered me some work experience just wow. randomly, very kindly. Um, so I took that up and then six months later I was still there and um, just part-time while I was still working at the supermarket and she offered me a full-time position so um, she, she'd never seen a CV of mine never didn't have the cover letter interview route and um, she just saw that I could do the job and must have liked it I mean that so. is uh, the power of social media isn't it wow that's, uh, that's, a, that's an interesting way but you also I don't think you've even mentioned yet you are the co-host of a northern podcast up north books <laughs> which everybody should go and follow if you uh, aren't already um but yeah I mean how did that start what was that another thing to get into uh, into the industry I mean obviously we spoke with Mandy before who is a gymnast and multilingual uh, so I think uh, something different but there you go a podcast as well yeah, um, so um, I think we started the podcast in about August um, and me and the co-host Beth, we basically would just both met up for a coffee, like just to make some publishing f hopeful friends. Um, and we were both talking about how like passionate we were about Northern publishing and not being so like London centric and neither of us really having the drive to kind of go and ever want to live there um, and just wanting to kind of shed a light on something else. And there was kind of, a, this was before the time when loads of newsletters started popping up, but um, it's really good to kind of learn a new skill. And if you're kind of struggling to get work experience to kind of make something yourself, I think that's why so many people have blogs and things. Um, but we wanted to do a podcast because it was just something a little bit different. Um, and yeah, we've been going since August now. We do um, interviews with Northern authors, northern presses we'll just have like a chat about books and um, we like to talk about representation and whose stories are getting told um but yeah it, it was we're not experts by any means but 
we just bought a cheap microphone and Googled it. <laughs> We're still going. Well, I mean, it's one of the skills. I think if you are interested in the digital side of publishing as well, that is huge at the moment as well. And audiobooks are obviously a soaring at the minute. They are huge. And um, we all know that things have changed in the trade. There are trends and uh, digital skills uh, most definitely really help. Um, and that goes in every single department in publishing, I think. Um, being able to use the software or um, having some form of knowledge of being able to do a podcast, could you then, you know, not necessarily you, Kate, but if somebody could do a podcast and um, edit audio, you could go into the audio route and, um, you know, do that. Uh, be an audio editor there's loads of different options I think which um which is really good but um I don't think I could do a podcast so I, yeah I mean great I just <laughs> also, don't listen back to them I just don't listen back <laughs> fair enough um but there is also an SYP um podcast which I should probably plug as well um but yeah uh, I think Mandy's actually doing a uh podcast I do want to I know we're kind of flipping between different things but do you want to um yeah, so um, I put forward an idea that I wanted to do a <clears throat> diversity in publishing podcast um, because I have browsed through sort of publishing and um, creative industry podcasts on Twitter and on Spotify. And whilst there are some who have guests who are of di diverse backgrounds, there's, I couldn't find any that had a specific, you know, series dedicated to diversity. So um, I'm putting forward an idea to uh interview people who work in the industry both trade and academic who identify as um, a person of color lgbtqia plus um neurodivergent um disabled you know just a lot of different um groups so that's an idea that hopefully will come to fruition yeah definitely and i think um I think later this year, I think we might also be asking you for the SYP podcast, Mandy. So there you go. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we are uh, running out of time, I am aware. Um, so I will quickly just give a very quick background to me. Um, I did the editing English literature degree and I did a publishing master's at the University of Central Lancashire. Uh, we are a partner with UCLan. Um, we do quite a lot of work with them. Um, but yeah, so anyway, I did that. I was, I've been a lifeguard and a swimming teacher for the last 11 years. Um, and I took that to my first um, part time uh, interview. Uh, I was at Manchester University Press and I was a production assistant. So production is my, is my thing. Um, I was started there. Oh, years ago now uh, so I worked at MUP I was then a production editor and I worked on across all of the lists um, printing um, obviously printing but we did a lot with the printing um, and we basically took the books from um, commissioning to what you see on the shelf so paper um, binding everything including some editing as well um, I then moved from academic press to um, a small independent uh, called Saraband uh, they're based in Solver Keys they're a Scottish publisher publisher um, and I went there as their digital and production coordinator so I was in charge of production both print and digital um, and also a lot of the bibliographic and operations um, information that Kate was talking about earlier. Um, it's really important. And I think that's um, sometimes for forgotten about in publishing, because I think you see the end product, but you never see it from the beginning. So I literally took it from the, from just being an ISBN to, uh, to what you see on the shelf. Um, yeah. And then I moved away from that and I am freelancing as a uh, production person we'll call it uh, mostly proofreading but general production editing um at the moment as well and i have been a member of the syp for the last three 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 years um so yeah so i am in and out of lots of different things but um that's a very brief background of me um I, we are very much running out of time so i'm not going to give too much more but um yeah we do only have five or so minutes left um you know, we can, as anyone, I think we had a, que I had a question for all of you really, it's just a, if you could pick one word for a personal, what personality trait do you think works well in publishing or um, attribute, uh, skill, um, just one word, it's quite difficult. Um, for those that are looking into the trade who, um, you know, haven't, haven't heard about it before or, you know, just want something different. So what word are you going to go for? We'll go with Jess, any lucky word? <laughs> 
Yeah, um, well, my word I was going to go for was um, inquisitive. And I think everything that everyone on this call has said today has sort of backed that up, that people have had really different routes in, tried loads of different things before finding what they're in now and possibly finding something that they want to jump to next. So um, I think, yeah, being inquisitive and trying new things and have it, you know, grasping every opportunity that sort of comes your way. Um, that would be my word, I think. Go on, Kate. Up north, Kate. <laughs> um, I was going to say proactive. Um, being proactive and showing that you don't wait for things to happen to you and that you just try your best. Um, that always comes off really well. And yeah, just showing that you do have a place in the industry, even if you don't think you do, you definitely do. That's a good one. Kate or Amanda, who wants to go? I'll, I'll go. Uh, my one is persistence, which I think most people who are in this industry can agree with. It's not a case of you can just get in easily. It's a really difficult industry to break into. So I think as long as you have persistence and you don't let it get you down, you will, you'll, you'll be fine. Um, my word was initiative because I think it's kind of the same as what everyone else has said, like making your own opportunities. Um, yeah. yeah. No, I think that's, that's a good no. one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I think mine will very quickly, uh, flexibility. Um, I think you need to be flexible what you do. If you do go in thinking you want to be an editor, are you sure? What type of editing do you want to do? Um, and also if you go for a smaller publisher, um, you'll be doing lots of different things and wearing many different hats. Uh, flexible, just in case the uh, book, uh, you know, the publication date gets pulled three months before it should be. Um, yeah, flexible in lots of many different things. But, um, but yeah, I just want to give a very quick roundup um, and thank the team for helping me today and a big thank you to the Portico for um, asking us to join. Uh, we all are on uh, social media I believe. Um, I can leave information with Ruth um, from the Portico if you want to uh, to follow us or um, obviously SYP North is on all socials. Uh, our newsletter is there as well. Um, the website hopefully should be done next week um, so when this is recorded and out it will should be live. Uh, and yeah, thank you very much for joining us. If anyone does have any follow up questions for anyone on the committee here or for me or generally just as a Society of Young Publishers question, uh, do feel free to contact us on, um, yeah, on social media or our email that you can find off the website. Um, but yeah, I will keep it short and I will say goodbye. But thank you very much to everyone. And yeah, we hope to see you all soon. Bye. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.